Okay, so here we are up on a roof. What we're gonna take a look at really quick is just a little bit of a, it's a micro inverter system. So it would be a typical residential install. So you can see we're on a sloped asphalt shingle roof. And what we've got here is we've got two micro inverter systems that we're gonna take a look at. So let's pop off a panel and take a look. So what we have here is just a, a simple uh, micro inverter system. So here we have six modules. Right, this is a micro inverter system, but I just want to kind of fo focus on a little bit of the racking and then pull up one of these modules to take a look. So we can see the two rails, right, are running horizontally. Our modules are mounted in portrait. That's a super easy mounting, right? So in this case, these ones obviously aren't torqued down. They really should be, but this is just kind of a demonstration set of modules. So you would, again, use a torque wrench when you're installing these. Well, we can see they simply clamp. Uh, the end clamps are there. Then we, and the, the center clamps, right, we use a single clamp in between two modules, reduces our labor, gets those modules nice and tight together. So I'm just gonna loosen those a little bit. And take a look underneath, right? So this is the module installed. Now this is a little bit of an older installation. So we see a number six grounding uh, bonding conductor running through getting all the rails um, but as we see here you know super simple installation the module will come with the two uh, leads hanging off of it we simply when we're mounting the system we'll mount our racking to the roof using our flashing on our L foot then we come along and we will mount the micro inverter to the racking take care of any grounding and bonding required and if we have one we'll run our, our AC trunk cable then you come along, you mount your, or keep your inverters mounted, you plug your trunk cable in from the inverter, the AC side, and then you come along and you start mounting all of your modules, and then you just plug in the DC of your module, right? Keeping in mind, after the inverter in that trunk cable, it is in alternating current. So there's a very easy uh, wiring requirements based on our code. So that's kind of what it looks like underneath. Again, always being very careful right making sure you're standing on the downside of the module you don't want to drop these off the roof uh, and it's also very unsafe to walk on the modules just a little bit of dust or a little bit of water and you're gonna slip right off yeah so just to talk about we looked at the bonding of the actual rail so we had the number six running along the rail but to actually bond the modules we use what's called a weebs washer a washer electrical equipment bonding washer so if you zoom in real tight in here you can actually see that underneath so it's a it's a little washer which i'll, I'll put put here's a picture of in the video so that little washer you put that in and then when i tighten this equipment down it just tightens the little teeth on that into the actual frame of the module and that acts as our equipment bonding Okay, so here we are at the end of the rack, right, with our AC trunk cable, um, and we can see our bonding conductor as well. Now, these are going into our, our junction box on the roof. So this junction box on the roof is just kind of acting as our transition from roof to the inside. Uh, this particular brand is a Solidec, which is a good one. So basically, keeping in mind that this is just AC, when we open this up, All right, we open that up. Inside, all we see is just regular morettes or splices here. There is a terminal strip if you want to mount some terminals. But then going out of the back of the box into the attic space of what would be this residential installation, it's just standard NMD90 cabling. So just following standard wiring methods from section 12. There's nothing too difficult about it. Um, in this case, we have that number six bonding because of the requirements for this system. So that just comes in again and goes into the attic space as well. And again, just following our section 12 bonding, uh, or section 10 requirements for that. So that's the solo deck. We can see that nice flashing on there. Uh, so mounting it underneath the shingles will keep it waterproof. Once we throw that uh, enclosure lid back on, she's all sealed up and ready to go. And then you're good to just wire down to your electrical panel in the electrical room. So thanks for watching. Um, just a quick tour of what a microinverter system would look like up on roof.